searching, sorting, something we've been doing forever. Even on this channel, you'll probably see half our videos are about it. But this problem just goes to show that even the simplest of concepts can be applied in a myriad of different ways. Let's see what the problem has to offer. First and last position in a sorted array. You're given a sorted array ARR along with a key to be searched for. Return the first and last indices of the location of the key. If only one copy is present, return the same number twice. If the key is missing, return minus one, minus one. Now, what does this mean? First, let's take a look at our input. 10 is the number of elements in the succeeding array. This is the array and four is what we've got to search for. If we have a look right here, there are five fours present in our array. What's the starting location of the first four? That is zero, one, two, three. This is the starting location. What's the ending location? Four, five, six, seven. So the four start at three and they end at seven, which is why our output is three, seven. So it's a simple question, but the challenge here is to try and solve it in a time of log n. We don't want to take higher times like n. I'll leave the screen open, guys. Try to figure it out, and we'll be back shortly. All right, guys. So first thing that should come to mind when we see a sorted array and when we see a time complexity of login is binary search. So we know binary search constantly halves our array until we narrow down on the target element. Now we know if we keep doubling our array, that's exponential. It increases by a power of two. The reverse process of exponential is logarithmic, which is why binary search gets completed in a time of log n. So first, once we apply our binary search, we calculate our middle element. This four will be our middle element, the second four. What we can do is simply move down until we find an element that's not four, move up until we find an element that's not four and return the starting and ending values. All the fours will be continuous since it's a sorted array. The problem arrives when we've got, say, an entire array filled with fours. In that case, we're traversing through the entire array by going from middle to zero and by going from middle to n. So we're making n traversals, in which case our worst case complexity is O of n, which we don't want. We want to try and finish it in a complexity of O of log n. Now we've already established that binary searches take a time of log n. Whether we perform one, two, or three separate binary searches, they'll all still have a complexity of O of log n. Can we use that to our advantage right here? We performed one binary search already to find the target element. Now all we need to do is find its range. Can we do so? Think about it. Head on to the coding link down below. Read the problem in its entirety. And once you're done, head on back and I'll explain the solution. So guys, if you have a look at your screen right here, we found one four. We found one position where our target element is in. Now we've got to narrow down on the starting and ending position. What we're going to do is perform two separate binary searches. One on the left half of the array, ending at the position we've just narrowed down on, and one on the right half of the array, starting at that very same position. So if we look at the first half of the array, we're going to perform a binary search on it. But this is not a traditional binary search. We're not searching for four. We already know four exists in this array. It's the last element. We want to find the first occurrence of four. How do we do this? Instead of traditional binary searches, where if mid is equal to the target element, we simply return that position. We're going to check if mid is equal to target element and add another condition on top of that. If the previous element is not the same as the current element, only then do we return that position as the starting location. We are also going to set our last index to mid if mid is equal to the last index. Similarly, when we took a look at the latter half of the array right here, we're not simply going to check if mid is equal to four. We're going to check if mid is equal to four and if mid is not equal to mid plus one. Only then do we return the position. Also, if the element at mid is equal to the starting index, we update starting index to mid's value. Once we perform these steps, we're able to narrow down on a range and we simply return this range. Now, right here, we can see our code. 
We're going to have a starting index and end, last index naturally, pointing to the beginning and end. We're going to attempt to find our target element using a normal binary search, the same type we've learned before. If ARR of mid equals key, we simply assign a flag to one and break. If ARR mid is less than key, what we do is we update our starting index to mid plus one. If it's greater than key, we update our ending index to mid minus one. Now, if our flag is zero, that means the element does not exist. We return minus one, minus one. If it is not zero, what we're going to do is perform a binary search on the first half of the array. In order to do that, we assign our starting index to zero, our last index to mid. We check if middle equals to key, which is normal. And on top of that, we check if middle minus one is not equal to key. We also check if middle is zero. Because if middle is zero, we can't check middle minus one. That's the index minus one, which doesn't exist. So if either of these two conditions are true, then our starting position is going to be middle. Following that, we simply break out. Next, what we do is we update our last index first. We check if middle is greater than or equal to key. Honestly, we can simply check if it's equal to key because we know key is the greatest value. If it is equal to key, we just assign middle to the current index minus one. If that's not true, we update our starting index. Similarly, we've got to check the latter half of our array. So our starting index is going to be mid. Last index is going to be the very final value. If middle is equal to the last element or if middle plus one, that is the element after it is not equal to key. If either of these conditions are true, and if ARR of middle is equal to key, that means that is the last position of our target element. So we append it into our result and we simply break out. If that's not true, first we check if middle is less than or equal to key. Again, we can simply replace that with equal to equal to since we know middle is going to be the smallest element in that subarray which we're checking. If that's true, we update starting index to that position plus one. If that's not true, we update our last index. We simply return result to get our answer. Now compile is working. Let's see if submit works. Accepted. All of them have been accepted. So guys, that's the solution to the problem. First and last position in a sorted array. We're simply applying binary search three times. But the way the problem is phrased makes it very challenging to figure that out. If you guys like the video, make sure to hit this golden trio right here and make sure to leave your comments down below. It's been Vivek Kalur guys, and I'll see you all next time.